way I look at objections, there's two levels of an objection, two main levels, right? So there's the objection the first time they say it, right? You know, for instance, I need to talk to my daughter. So the first time you get the objection, you really want to ignore the objection. You know, acknowledge, ignore, move on. Now, if you get the same objection later on, well, now, obviously, you're going to have to meet that objection face on, right? And what you would say would be different. So what we're going to do, we're going to do some objection training with Bianca. And we're just going to, I'm going to hit her with objections, and we're going to do first level objections, right, And as, as we're going. And then from there, we're going to try to stump her, and we're going to make her go deeper. We're going to make her deal with the objections head on. So this business is all about getting over objections. Like once you learn how to get over objections, the rest is easy. You know, what I always tell people is the difference between an agent that's average or not having the success they wanted and one that's having the success that they want is they learn how to deal with objections. They stop believing the objection like it's something real. I'll give you an example. I researched a TV I wanted to buy for like six months, right? I found out where I wanted to buy it, which was Best Buy. I knew the exact price of the TV. I walked into Best Buy with my Best Buy credit card ready to buy the TV. A salesperson came running right up to me. Can I help you? No, 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 I'm just looking, was my my immediate response. It was a reflex. As soon as I said that, I'm like, I'm such an idiot because I actually need this guy to buy this TV. Like I can't walk in the back and grab the TV. So I had to humble myself for a second and say, actually, I do need your help. I had to basically chase the guy down because I couldn't buy the TV without him, right? So our clients do the same exact thing, right? And, and that's what the objections are. And when we realize that and we learn to get around those objections, we ultimately get to help more people. I remember being in this yard, I pulled up, the lady was outside of the yard, and I, I hate when they're outside when I'm pulling up because they see me coming, right? They, like, they have time to start thinking about what they're going to say and how they're going to get rid of me. And uh, it's like, all right, here I come. I'm out with my clipboard. Hey, how you doing? Nope, nope. She's walking away from me. I was like, no, you filled this card out. She's like, nope, nope. And she's walking around, and I'm literally following her. We're walking circles around the yard, like follow the leader. <laughs> And I'm holding my clipboard, and in my head, I'm like, there's no way I'm getting in this house. But what I want to make sure is I did everything I can to get in the house so I could take that lead and put it in my other pile, right? I didn't want to put that lead in my, oh, maybe I could have gotten if I tried a little harder pile, because that's a tough pile to deal with, right? So I just kept falling around in circles, like, no, you filled this out. We got to go over this. They're going to keep sending me. You don't understand. I'm obligated. And I just threw every single thing I can to this lady to get in the house and she let, and honestly, I did not think I was getting the house. I was having fun at that point, right? I paid $35 for this, I'm about to have some fun, right? We're gonna have a blast together. And, and that's, that's how I felt, right? And I followed her around and eventually she let me in the house. I was like, oh, I don't even know what to do now. And that's when you gotta make a friend, right? Cause she let me in the house. I don't know why she let me in the house. I honestly thought there's no chance to get in the house. I just kept going through the motions regardless. She let me in the house and long story short, She's writing the check, and she just starts busting out laughing. And I'm looking at her like, what the heck is going on now? And she's like, I am so sorry. I was so mean to you. I had no idea you are going to show me what you showed me. You know, and she completely apologized. She's still on the books, right? And I easily could have walked away the first time she's like, get out of my yard. (laughs) Easily. Right, but I wanted to keep going through, keep dealing with the objections, just just doing my job and making sure I did whatever I had to do to get her the information. Um, so again, let's let's stump Bianca, Lady on Fire. Let, let's see, she's ready, she's pumped. Yeah. <laughs> so Bianca, I, I love what you're showing me, but I can't afford it. Absolutely, Mr. David. I understand you can't afford it. Let me get some more information and see if I can get you qualified. Back to the app. Back to the app. So you so, said you wanted your beneficiary to be John. Yes. Perfect. All right. So she ignored the, she acknowledged the objection. She agreed. She went around the objection, but she did the most important thing is she asked the next question on the app because that's what's going to help you move forward. If she doesn't do that, you just, we're having a stare off, yeah. right? You got, you got to take forward. You got to move forward. So it opens the door and you don't take the step in. Everyone's just looking at each other kind of awkward at that point, right? 
When, and you're almost like waiting for permission from them to move forward, and they're not going to do that. No. So you almost have to take them by the hand and walk right. them down. Bianca, I, I love what you have, but I need to talk to my children. Absolutely. I'd want to talk to my children, too. Let me get some more information to see if I can get you qualified. And you said you wanted your daughter, Susie, to be your primary beneficiary? That's correct. Perfect. Bianca, I love what you, I love everything, but my children make all my decisions. Absolutely. I understand your children make all your decisions. I would do the same thing for my mom. Let me get some more information to see if I can get you qualified. You said you wanted Susie to be your primary beneficiary? I did. This next one's the hard one. <laughs> Bianca, I just need to think about it. Absolutely. I'd want to think about it too. So while you're thinking about it, let me get some more information to see if I can get you qualified. You said you wanted Susie to be your primary beneficiary? Yes. Perfect. Listen, I got plenty of insurance. Absolutely. 90% of our clients have coverage already. We could all use a little bit more. So let me get some more information to see if I can get you qualified. You said you wanted Susie to be your primary beneficiary? Yes. Perfect. I'm not interested in this. Absolutely, Mr. David. Look, I wouldn't even be interested either if I didn't have all the information. So let me get some more information to see if I can get you qualified. You said you wanted Susie to be your primary beneficiary? Yes. Perfect. Listen, I, I want to get it, but I don't ever make a decision until I sleep on it. Absolutely. I totally understand that. And you definitely have time to sleep on it. Let me get some more information to see if I can get you qualified. You said you wanted Susie to be your primary beneficiary? I sure did. Perfect. <laughs> All right, how'd she do? Good. Now we're gonna get deeper. <laughs> okay. Bianca, like I told you before, I can't afford it. I understand, Mr. David, you can't afford it. Let me get some more information to see if I can get you qualified. No, but I'm telling you, like I, I don't have the money for it. Okay, I understand. And look, a lot of our clients on, are on a fixed income, so I understand that, you know, this is a lot to take in, but I'm pretty sure that you can pay a dollar a day much more than your children can pay $10,000 at one time. Wouldn't you agree? That's true. Okay. So just a dollar a day. Can you afford a dollar a day? Maybe. Maybe. Okay. Well, look, you don't have to decide now. Let me get some more information to see if I can get you qualified. And you said you wanted Susie to be your primary sure beneficiary? <laughs> Bianca, like I told you before, I need to talk to my children. I understand you need to talk to your children. This is a big decision. I'd want to talk to my children too. Let me get some more information to see if I can get you qualified. I, I don't want to move forward until I talk to my children. I totally understand that. Let me ask you a question. When your children were little, right? Mm -hmm. And you used to put them in their car seat. Yeah. Did you ask their permission before you buckled them into their car no, seat? No, of course not. Of course not. Why not? Because it's our job to protect them. Exactly. That's exactly what we're doing here. So why do you need their permission to protect them? I didn't think about it that way. Absolutely. So look, I'm gonna get some more information to see if I can get you qualified. You will have an opportunity to talk to your children. And you said you wanted Susie to be your primary beneficiary, right? I sure did. Perfect. Awesome. That's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> Bianca, my children make all the decisions. Your children make all your decisions. I totally understand that. So look, to get some information to see if I can get you qualified. You said you wanted Susie to be your primary beneficiary? Yes. But again, my children make all my decisions. Look, I totally understand that, Mr. David. And if I were your children, I'd want to do the same thing. But let me ask you a question. Did you bring your children into this world or did they bring you into this world? Well, of course I brought them in. Exactly. So you as the parent know what's best, right? Yeah. You're older, you're wiser, right? Yes. Do you feel good about putting this in place for them? Well, yeah, I guess so. Right. You know, and on that worst day, they're going to be emotional, they're going to be vulnerable, they're going to be grieving. I guarantee you they're not going to regret you doing this for them right now. All right? So let me get some more information to see if I can get you qualified. You said you wanted Susie to be your primary beneficiary, right? I sure did. Perfect. Bianca, I just, again, I love it. I just need to think about it. I understand you want to think about it. While you're thinking about it, let me get some more information to see if I can get you qualified. Again, I, I just got to think more first. Yeah, absolutely. Look, you're going to take all the time in the world. You need to think about it. This is just an application to see if we can get you approved. 
They're going to send you a policy. You have time to look it over, make any changes before anything's actually finalized. Okay. So let me get some more information to see if I can get you qualified. And you said you wanted Susie to be your primary beneficiary, right? I sure did. Thank you. Bianca, I, I got so much insurance. I, I, I don't need any more insurance. The last thing I need is more insurance. I understand that. I understand that. So most of our clients have insurance already, right? Um, there's two things that people always tell me when they lose a loved one. One, I'm glad they had insurance. And two, I wish they had a little bit more, mm. right? So you said you have $10,000. That would probably be enough to cover you if you passed away today. But as we talked about before, every 10 years, the cost will change, right? So this is just going to protect what you already have in place. Okay, so I'm going to get a little bit more information to see if I can get you qualified. You said you wanted Susie to be your primary beneficiary, right? I did. I sure did. Okay, great. Yuck, I, I'm not really interested in any of this. I understand. I understand. So I have a lot of people that tell me they're not interested every day, right? Um, but again, why was it that you called in to our advertisement? I was interested. You were interested. Right. And you told me you didn't have insurance, right? Yes. Okay. So that's what we're going to do for your children today is put this in place to make sure on that worst day when you pass away, they have enough money to cover the cost of your services. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to get a little bit more information to see if I can get you qualified. You said you wanted Susie to be your primary beneficiary, right? I did. Okay. Again, I just got to sleep on it. That's it. I'll probably get it. <laughs> but I got to sleep on it. Okay. I understand, Mr. David. I would want to sleep on it too, you know, but at the end of the day, let me ask you this question. What happens if you go to sleep and you don't wake up tomorrow? Well, I don't know. I won't be here. Exactly. What is little Susie going to do? Does she have the $10,000 that it's going to cost to bury you? No, of course not. Of course not. Okay. So let me get some more information to see if I can get you qualified. You said you wanted Susie to be your primary beneficiary, right? Yes. How'd she do? Ma'am, 